This video is in the hydrology playlist and we're looking at the 10 biggest rivers on the planet and where they're located and how much water is flowing down the channel and this is called discharge. We're going to discuss what discharge is and look at these rivers in more detail. This is the Earth Science Classroom. So in discussing these rivers and the discharge, the amount of water that's going to flow through the river channel down towards the ocean, we've got to discuss runoff and the hydrologic equation, which is the amount of water that's going to fall as precip, which is the, the total amount or source of water, which is meteoric. And then you've got to subtract any water that's going to flow into the ground as groundwater or interflow in the soil all that's caught by plants and then through transpiration going back to the atmosphere or just generally through the solar energy which is evaporation so if you take away the groundwater transpiration evaporation you're left with the amount of water that's going to flow over the land which is called runoff now this runoff will naturally run into streams of various levels and sizes and flow down the stream creating a river so the amount of discharge is directly linked to the amount of runoff and we can also include the base flow in this which is the amount of water that comes from groundwater that seeps into the river through gravity and the amount of water in the river channel. Now a discharge is called the flow and also measured in the size of the volume of water that's going down the river channel or the river and this equation is Q equals V times A. So Q is going to be the discharge, V is the velocity of the water, and the A uh, stands for the cross-sectional area of that river channel. Now it's generally broken into small sections and then you add up all the sections to give a total amount of discharge because the river channel varies in depth and width and the speed of the water going through the channel is not uniform. So you have to take these cross-sectional areas and add them up to get a mean average discharge over a mean average velocity and mean average area of that channel. And once we have the discharge, we can measure it in other uh, cubic meters per second or cubic feet per second. So as one of the largest rivers on the planet, this river in Russia kind of splits Russia in two in terms of the eastern and western section. It's called the Yenisei and it goes a long way in terms of distance and discharge is around 19 and a half thousand cubic meters per second and flows into the Kara Sea. Then we head down a little bit to the southeast from Russia looking at Asia and Southeast Asia and the three very large rivers in this area that include both India and China. So the first one is the Ganges which is our white river right there on the map and it has a discharge of 38,000 cubic meters per second. Then we have the Yangtze which is the blue river line on the map uh, flowing through China which has a average discharge of around 30,000 cubic meters per second. And then we have Brahmapucha River which is in the kind of the pinkish color on the map which has a discharge of around 19 thousand eight hundred twenty thousand cubic meters per second so these three major rivers are all located in the asian continent and all three are very famous rivers by themselves for not only what they support in terms of population and the area they flow through but also historically as well now we come down to south america and look at one of the largest rivers in south america which borders both uruguay and argentina this is called the rio de la plata this is a cumulative river in terms of it's at the end lower course flatter areas and kind of flows into the Atlantic ocean and it is fed by a bunch of loads of large rivers and all the river discharge from these small rivers all end up in the rio de la plata so that's why it has such a large discharge of around 27,000 cubic meters per second. Now these rivers include the Uruguay, the Paraguay, the Salado, and the Panana, and the Grande. So all these large rivers all flow into Rio de la Plata. This is why it has a large discharge. Now we come to South America, a different part of South America, which is around the Amazon Basin, the Amazon Rainforest Basin. And this is the kind of the mother of all rivers in terms of the amount of precip, the recycling of, of water, and just the historical significance of this basin that starts off in the Andes Mountains 
off to the west and flows all the way down to the Atlantic Ocean in the east. Now, this is a very large area it covers and it is questionable whether the Amazon or the Nile are the longest rivers in the world, but in terms of discharge, there is no question, no ambiguity, it's straightforward. The Amazon has the largest discharge on the planet. Now, this is also because we have three other major rivers on the planet all feeding in or around the Amazon. Now, there's one river that flows through Venezuela, Orinoco, which is a very large river of 37,000 cubic meters per second of discharge and kind of starts around the Amazon basin but flows north to or through Venezuela to the Atlantic Ocean. But the other two, the Rio Negro and the Madeira, all flow in the basin and join up with the Amazon as a confluence. Both the blue line right here and the red line right here. The blue line is the Rio Negro and the red line is the Madeira. And Madeira has 31,000 cubic meters per second of discharge. And the Rio Negro is a little bit more of 36,000. Now, both of these flow into the Amazon. So the Amazon as a total river discharge is a whopping 210,000 cubic meters per second, which is cumulatively pretty much a little bit less than all the other nine rivers combined. So this is a heck of a lot of rain that's going to flow as runoff into the river and flow through the channel, eventually making its way to the Atlantic Ocean. This river is absolutely gigantic, a monster, and besides the other factors of the Amazon River, just the pure discharge of amount of water is insane. So our final river as one of the largest in the world to discuss is on the African continent. It's not the Nile, unfortunately, which is very famous. It's very long, but it's actually the Congo. The Congo has a discharge of 41,000 cubic meters per second, which is, again, large in itself, but not compared to the Amazon. It is part of a tropical rainforest in Central Africa and a very famous and large river all by itself. Now the Nile, does have a discharge, but a very small discharge comparatively, which is only about 2,800 cubic meters per second. So the Nile is famous with the blue and the white Nile, but in terms of discharge, it doesn't really make the top 10 list. So as an overview, you have the locations of these major rivers around the world. Unfortunately, certain areas of the planet don't have large rivers like Australia or Europe or Scandinavia. They have rivers, but not large enough to make these the top 10 list. So you see the Amazon is a whopping 210,000 meters cubed per, se per second, going down to the Yenisei in Russia, which is 19,500 cubic meters per second. But we do have some honorable mentions. Mississippi, which is a very large river in North America, has 15,000 cubic meters per second. The Thames, which is a famous river flowing through London, where I'm from, is around 65, which is kind of puny comparatively. The Rhine in Europe, 15,000. The Nile, as discussed, is nearly 3,000. And the Danube, a very famous river in Eastern Europe, has around 6,500 cubic meters per second. So in terms of the Amazon, it's not really anything to talk about. And even the top 10 don't really touch the Amazon, but they are massive rivers and very famous around the world. And the discharge is the amount of water flowing through the channel. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.